education did my post graduation in education and phd in education technology all from punjab university chandigarh and after working for about two and a half years in industries i joined teaching profession as a lecturer in a college of education in ambala city and worked there for seven years from 1985 to 1992 i joined this institution in the year 1992 and presently i am associate professor and head of the academic cell which is responsible for admission and examination of me and phd program i have to my credit more than 29 years of ex uh, experience in teaching and research i have uh, to my credit 28 phd dissertation registered with punjab university chandigarh and presently four uh, students are pursuing their phd under my supervision and uh, i have to credit uh, i have to my credit uh, six textbooks mainly in the area of uh, education technology and teaching learning process and uh, presented number of papers in various national and international journals and conferences now coming to today's uh, important session uh, first of all uh, let us have some clarification between the term teaching and instruction uh, actually uh, the teachers and administrators have been using teaching and uh, instruction interchangeably the meaning of these two terms is different can you uh, give some distinction between the term teaching and instruction anybody <laughs> the hint is both aim at achieving certain objectives but it is the manner or the procedure by which the objectives are achieved makes these two terms different now can you give the uh, uh, difference rulers guidelines instruction means guidelines instruction means guideline anybody else instruction only one way teaching is two way teaching is two way good instruction is one way okay you see instruction can be facilitated through textbook or it can be facilitated through some video program the student is learning or going through the textbook in case he has some doubts he cannot seek further clarification information or elaboration as he has rightly said that teaching is a two way process uh, it involves face to face interaction between the teacher and the students and whenever the students have some doubt they can ask for clarification okay uh, in the past plans for teaching and instruction have been largely made by intuition and have often been based upon ambiguous purposes and casual subjective judgment uh, for example uh, in the previous times if you ask some teacher uh, what is the objective he says my objective is to enable my students understand ohms law or to enable my students know ohms law now this is a kind of uh, you can say uh, a very uh, vague objective because if you evaluate you cannot evaluate these objectives uh, objectively like uh, uh, enable them understand ohms law and the corresponding question is what do you understand by ohms law what do you know about ohms law now if this question is given to you all of you will organize uh, your answer as per your own you can say mental capability okay and uh, uh, you will uh, all of you will have a very uh, variable answers and if one answer sheet is marked by two or three uh, different teachers that answer sheet will carry different marks but in case i ask question like state ohms law draw a circuit diagram of ohms law draw a graph between v and i or verify ohms law or list situations where ohms law can be applicable now there is a shift from teacher centered objective to performance based objectives now the objective is that after the uh, topic is over students will be able to understand ohms law they will be able to understand ohms law these are the general objective broad objective and what are the specific objective they will be able to define current voltage they will be able to name the device which measure current voltage or they will be able to state si unit of current voltage they will be able to draw circuit diagram for ohms law they will be able to verify ohms law they will be able to draw graph between v and i and they will be able to list situations where ohms law can be applicable so there is a shift now we want to know what the student has been able to 
do anything okay so he will be able to perform he will be able to explain so teaching uh, is a very uh, complex process and earlier the emphasis has been with method of teaching now we have realized that teaching is a complex process because it is influenced or affected by a number of factors for example there are wide individual differences among learners some are slow learners some are fast learner some student learn best by listening to the teacher some student learn best when some audio or video are uh, video are played okay some student learn best when they are involved or they are, uh, they they give their participation okay you see students have got different expectations from their teacher one student says if you tell me i will forget if you show me means the you write something on the board or use uh, use some media i may remember the third student says if you involve me i will be always with you so this is what the present uh, uh, time students are expecting from their teachers so the teaching is a very complex process number of factors are influencing it one is individual differences i told you then you see uh, in the engineering college there are wide variety of subjects practical skills there are a lot of variation likewise there are wide varieties of instructional methods and media nowadays are available earlier we used to employ only the lecture method now uh, we have to uh, you can say achieve different purposes for achieving different purposes we need to make use of variety of instruction methods variety of uh, you can say instruction media and likewise there are variety of evaluation tools available nowadays earlier we used to use only the essay kind of questions where we used to ask what do you know about force write a short note on semiconductor okay yeah when we say what are newton's laws of motion now again this question is very uh, you can say defective it's very vague one student will write the statements of three laws another student will give one example now can't we say describe each of three newton's laws of motion with one example now all these students got the scope of the topic to be discussed so they will write uh, as per the demand of the question but if the question is what are newton's laws of motion so nothing is uh, uh, clearly indicated in the statement of the question likewise if i ask explain the working principle of carburetor of an ic engine now one student explains the working principle another student explains with the help of a neat sketch or diagram now both the students have uh, uh, given their answers but the teacher gives maximum mark to the, the to the student who has uh, explained with the help of a sketch now the first student asked the teacher why you have given me less mark the teacher says that you have not drawn the diagram but the student asks he says sir there is nothing mention of any diagram in the statement of the question so can't we state the question like explain with a neat sketch the working principle of carburetor of an ic engine it means you have to uh, indicate clearly specifically the direction or the kind of answer you are expecting of course you can uh, give a open ended question very open ended question in the form of assignment but when it comes to uh, uh, grading of the students we have to give very specific questions so <laughs> there are wide uh, uh, differences and uh, by manipulating or by controlling one factor or only a few factor it is not possible to achieve hope for success for improving the uh, key outcome of education that is learning by students so in order to intelligently relate all the components of a complex instructional system in making a successful program an approach which is being widely used in military space business is uh, uh, receiving an increased attention and that approach involves the development of an overall plan in carburetting the interrelated components or parts in a sequential manner and that approach is called as systems approach and this session is about systems approach to design of instruction how we can uh, use uh, this uh, particular approach for the designing of instruction and first of all we will learn 
the concept of system. What we mean by system. So can you uh, define what a system is? Inter connection of components. So it means a system refers to group of elements or parts working together in a regular fashion. Okay. A system refers to set of elements arranged in an orderly manner to achieve some objective. For example, computer as a system. Now it has got various components like input devices, output devices, DBMS, personal, okay. All, all these components are working independently. They are also working in relation to each other. Isn't it? They are connected with some, uh, you can say there is some relationship and the purpose is to process data and provide information. This is the purpose. Likewise, uh, business as a system. The components are raw material, machinery, manpower, finance, all are interacting with each other and uh, the purpose is to achieve the turnover or to have higher profitability. Okay, so this is business as a system. And let me give you an example of uh, uh, the uh, engineering college as a system. Uh, just have a look at this diagram. You see input to the system is students with uh, students possessing some prerequisites. They have some knowledge, they have some skill, they have some attitude. Okay, they are entering with some basic qualification. Maybe plus two uh, uh, is the entry qualification for say uh, engineering institution. So uh, students enter with some prerequisite or being transformed into the suitable, you can say, uh, pass outs possessing the desired knowledge, skills and attitude as per the demand of the word of work. Okay, they leave the organization with a changed set of knowledge, skills and attitude. They enter with some knowledge, skills and attitude. So uh, let me ask you one, uh, one thing. What is knowledge? What is skill? What is attitude? What is knowledge? Knowledge means what does someone need to know in order to do a job? That is the theory. And what is skill? What does someone need to be able to do? So skill requires hand and head coordination. Okay, skill uh, is, uh, uh, that is why it is also called psychomotor. Psycho means brain, motor means muscles. So which involves hand and head coordination, that is working on lathe or uh, say performing some experiment in the laboratory or in the workshop, that is skill. And what is attitude? What sort of approach does a person doing that job need to have? That is attitude. It is uh, uh, a, a form of uh, evaluative statement either favorable or unfavorable concerning the object, person, event, process. So all these three components are required for developing all round personality in the students. So, uh, <coughs> so it means you have got the uh, students who come from the environment for being transformed into the pass out and instructional and curriculum process and uh, physical resources are required, uh, space, equipment and uh, the, uh, you can say, consumables. And then you require human resources, uh, faculty, supporting staff, administrative staff is also needed. And uh, then you need information resources, uh, including the curriculum document, textbook, <laughs> instructional media, etc. And you also require energy resources like uh, uh, water, uh, electricity and so on and then you also need financial resources both uh, plan and non-plan that is recurring and non-recurring and uh, all these resources are managed by a group of people at the top level and uh, then this system is working in an environment and uh, you get feedback from the environment. Now the students are <laughs> leaving the organization with a changed set of knowledge and they enter the employment sector some students join professional uh, institution for higher qualification and uh, they 
the professional uh, institutions or the industry provide feedback and feedback is given to all these components. So this is the concept of a system and the purpose of this uh, engineering college system is to, uh, to produce students with requisite knowledge, skills and attitude. Now I have given you three examples of a system, uh, the computer system, the business system and the technical education system. Now if you look at these three uh, uh, systems, you will find that system is not a randomly arranged set of elements. It is arranged with some logics, governed by rules, regulations, policies and such an arrangement is also influenced by the purpose the system wishes to achieve. For example, if the purpose of the computer as a system is to process data and provide information, you require a specific set of elements. Okay, But if you change the objective to say to design engineering drawing and uh, problems, then you require a different set of elements. Probably with the previous set of elements, you um, will not be able to achieve this new objective. So it means a clear statement of the objective brings a clarity and precision into the selection of elements and their arrangement in the system. And any disorder would create disturbance. Okay. So uh, first of all, you have to formulate the objective very clearly. Then that will provide you valid results and reliable results. So uh, this is uh, about the systems approach. Now we'll move to the next component. Yes. System approach comprises elements which interact for a useful purpose. Ye maine aapko already bata diya. And it is uh, applicable at various levels, program level, subject level, topic level. It means system approach can be best applied first to the individual topic, then to the subjects, one subject, and then it can be applied uh, on the entire program. You see, uh, there are topics which are contained in one subject. There are six or eight subjects in one semester. There are eight semesters in one program. So it means this system approach can be best applied first on an individual topic, then to the units, then to the subject, then to number of subjects, then at the level of the uh, program. So initially involving one teacher or few teachers and then you can uh, you can say uh, plan for the entire program. So instruction design process is a goal directed process and it is also pre-planned. Pre-planning is very essential for implementing the plan. So three phase instruction system design is a three phase formula. One is what must be learned means what are the objectives. Now let me uh, give you very simple uh, questions like this uh, pre-planning answers three kind of question. One question is where am I going? What does it mean? It means what knowledge, skills and attitude will be developed in the students through one lecture. That is what are the objectives of today's instruction? Where am I going? Second question is how will I get there? That is in order to reach objective what things are required? That is which method of teaching, which media, how much content you require or what kind of tools you will use okay, for measuring their performance. And third question is how will I know when I have arrived at the end or during the uh, discussion you will ask few questions and answer to those questions will give you an idea to what extent uh, your ideas are uh, getting across these students to what extent they have achieved. So <coughs> what must be learned that is what are the objectives what procedures resources will work best for achieving learning outcomes and how to know that learning outcome achieved. So 
instructional design process uh, there are some activities which need to be carried out at the program level some activities need to be carried out the, at the subject level and some activities are required to be carried out at the lesson level so we'll see uh, various activities now first few activities at the program level that is that is at the institution level one is analysis of needs goals and priorities the instructional design results from some perceived need okay in the context of vastly changing technology being the characteristics of modern industrial society instruction imparted in technical education system uh, 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 we have found that there is a gap between what is and what should be and it is this gap between what is and what should be generates the need for a new instruction system or at least a modified instruction system so you see sometimes you find a gap you want to update the system you want to say uh, delete some of the topics or you want to say add some of the topic or you want to um, uh, offer all together a new program so uh, the need analysis is carried out okay likewise need analysis can be carried out for teaching a particular topic in the class you see if uh, i enter the classroom with the statement dear friends today i am going to talk to you about this thing today i will teach you about this thing and yeah, today i will discuss you now students will say sir this is your headache please go and break your head because we have not uh, uh, identified the need we have not built the uh, we have not built the uh, rationale students want to know why they are learning that why part must be communicated to them in the beginning for example uh, say i want to uh, introduce the topic what is the position of this object is it at rest or is it moving definitely you will say it is at rest now on switching on the fan i uh, ask the question what is the position of this fan definitely you will say it is in motion wonderful now this is at rest how can i bring it into motion by pushing by pulling that is by applying some kind of force okay wonderful you are sitting in a moving bus and the driver suddenly applies brakes what happens we go forward okay and what happens when the driver suddenly starts the bus we go backward why are these you two no this is a topic for a student of class 7 he has already observed all these things in his or her daily life and uh, the teacher has also ta uh, taught uh, the students about the concept of rest motion and force in the previous class now this uh, this gap or this uh, you can say uh, that uh, this need is not known to them the answer is not known to them then you say these are due to laws of inertia and today in this session we will learn laws of inertia never say i will teach i will discuss because in today's context no one has the complete authority to teach a particular topic you see wo guruon ka zamana khatam ho gaya when the whole information was available with them and uh, people used to go to him okay for uh, getting knowledge but in today's context everybody has access to internet everybody has access to number of uh, other uh, you can say instruction material so teacher is also learning along with the student because you also possess some knowledge you are also contributing you are also participating that is also adding to my vocabulary so never say that i will teach always say that today in this session we will learn okay so then you go to board and write laws of inertia in the middle and on the left hand side you give them an overview of your today's lecture that first of all in this session we will study or we will learn uh, uh, inertia of rest inertia of motion inertia of direction and the example now let us take first of all inertia of rest okay now let me give you one more uh, example yes what are the constituents of air yes anybody again to ask the question what are the constituents of air air is a perfect gas the number of 
Yes. And gas was overheat. That is the perfect gas. Is the structure of the air. I am asking, what are the constituents of air? What is contained? Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide gas. Wonderful. Okay. Which gas do we inhale? Oxygen. Oh, good. Which gas do we exhale? Oxygen. Wonderful. And which gas is available in soda water bottle? Good. And which gas is used to extinguish fire? Carbon dioxide gas. Wonderful. You see, you have seen number of applications of carbon dioxide gas. How this gas can be prepared? Now everybody is curious. Everybody is excited to know why, how. Okay. Then you say that carbon dioxide gas can be prepared by treating calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. So today in this session, we will learn. Never say I will teach. Okay. So we will learn preparation of carbon dioxide gas. Go to board and write in the middle preparation of carbon dioxide gas. Then first of all in this session we will learn the laboratory setting. You write laboratory setting. Uh, the names of the reactants, the precautions to be observed and uh, the procedure, physical property, chemical property and so on. So you give them an overview. So this must be communicated in the beginning because students want to know why they are sitting in the class. So that why path must be coming. So you have to uh, do the need analysis okay for the individual topic for say changing the content of the syllabus there is a need because uh, uh, the uh, syllabus has become obsolete and we wish to include some of the uh, topic or we wish to delete some of the topics okay or we want to uh, start a totally new program so need analysis then that need is to be translated into goals what are the goals and then goals are to be prioritized. That is, which goals are to be taken first, which goals are to be taken at the later stage. For example, in the topic on preparation of uh, carbon dioxide gas, the uh, goals to be taken in the beginning are they will be able to draw laboratory setting of the apparatus, they will be able to name the reactants required, they will be able to explain your yeah, state, the precautions to be observed they will be able to explain the procedure for preparation of carbon dioxide gas they will be able to state the physical property chemical property and so on so you are giving a sequence first consa fir consa fir consa likewise uh, uh, as far as your subject is concerned you have uh, you, you will find that topics are arranged in a sequence first topic is a prerequisite of for, for the first topic the prerequisites are the uh, knowledge which they have acquired in the previous semester. For the second semester, the prerequisite will be the topic, first topic, and so on. So all the topics are arranged in a sequence. So goals are prioritized. So this is one thing. That is analysis of needs, goals, and priorities. Then the second uh, activity which the designer of instruction does is to specify the present state of system. What is the present state of system? So each component is reviewed in terms of its available resources and constraint. And the designer of the instruction asks few questions like, how would students learn to do things that goals specify? From whom would they learn? Where would they require? Where would they um, find resources or help which is needed by them? Is some compromise required to be made? If yes, what would it cost? What are the alternative, uh, you can say, uh, routes to reach learning objectives? Okay, because you, you see, when you are, uh, uh, say, launching new program, you also study the availability of uh, the um, uh, resources and what are the constraints and what can be used uh, uh, interchangeably. Okay, and then the kind of resources unke type kya hai, unki quantity kya hai. So you study the present state of system. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, second activity which the designer of the instruction has to do. The third activity at the program level is determining the scope and sequence of curriculum, subjects and alternate delivery system. Now here, what you will do, you will first uh, write down the content required for developing certain competencies in the students. Or competencies, kaun si hai? 
जो वर्ड ऑफ वर्क ने आपको बताई है क्योंकि तो जब आप सिलेबस डिजाइन करते हो यू ऑल्सो इन्वाइट पीपल फ्रॉम वेरियस इंडस्ट्रीज क्योंकि तो हमें किस तरह का जो है प्रोडक्ट uh, uh, चाहिए उसमें ये कैपेबिलिटीज डेवलप होनी चाहिए उन्हीं को ध्यान में रखे हुए यू डिसाइड अबाउट दी कंटेंट ऑफ योर यू कैन से सिलेबस एंड देन हर एक सब्जेक्ट में कितना कंटेंट आएगा कितना स्कोप होगा उसकी स्टडी एंड एवेल्यूशन स्कीम यू विल ऑल्सो प्रिपेयर सो सेमेस्टर वाइज और से एनुअल सिस्टम सो री स्टेट गोल्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्पेसिफिक ऑब्जेक्टिव और सेमेस्टर एनुअल प्रोग्रेस ऑन गोल्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव and then space material uh, equipment uh, all these things required are noted down and study and uh, evaluation scheme is also prepared so study and evaluation scheme so this is determining scope and sequence of curriculum subjects and alternate delivery system now we will shift to the subject level first activity is determining subject structure and sequence each subject has you know has a set of target objectives which are to be achieved at the end of a semester aur kai baar syllabus ke upar likha hua hota hai ki after this uh, after learning this particular subject students will be able to say there are say four units or five units you will find one objective for each of those five units हर एक ऑब्जेक्टिव यानी हर एक यूनिट का एक ब्रॉड ऑब्जेक्टिव दिया होगा इज़न इट ओके सो मैंने बोला ईच सब्जेक्ट हैज ए सेट ऑफ टारगेट ऑब्जेक्टिव्स व्हिच आर टू बी अटेंड एट द एंड ऑफ ए सेमेस्टर एंड ईच टारगेट ऑब्जेक्टिव हैज सेवरल इनेबलिंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स व्हिच आर स्मॉलर इन स्कोप इनेबलिंग ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या होते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल टॉपिक है ओम्स ला ओके एंड इट्स uh target objective is that after the topic is over students will be able to understand ohms law now this is the target objective understanding is very global very you can say uh, open okay and enabling objectives kya honge they will be able to define current define current define voltage they will be able to name the device which measure current name okay they will be able to ड्रॉ सर्कट डायग्राम सो मैंने स्मॉल स्मॉल ऑब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव यूज किए नेम डिफाइन ड्रॉ ऑल दीज लीड टू द अटेनमेंट ऑफ जनरल ऑब्जेक्टिव अंडरस्टैंड ओम्स ला क्योंकि अगर मेरा ऑब्जेक्टिव है वॉट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई ओम्स ला आपको मैंने पढ़ा दिया एंड आई आस्ट हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दिस ओम्स लाइड वी हैव अंडरस्टूड नाउ how can i see whether you have understood there is no lid main isko khol ke dekhun ki to what extent you have uh, knowledge or skill so i ask define current state as a unit of current draw circuit diagram these are very specific in questions ko main objectively measure kar sakta hu because these are observable behavior these can be measured देखिए ना मैंने बोला वर्ड डिफाइन एक्सप्लेन डिस्क्राइब स्टेट वेरीफाई दीज आर इसको इंग्लिश में बोलते हैं एक्शन वर्ब्स एक्शन वर्ब्स दीज आर ऑब्जर्वेबल बिहेवियर अगर मैं बोलता हूं राइट ए समरी ऑफ या या व्हाट डू यू नो अबाउट व्हाट डू यू मीन या मैं बोलता हूं व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड या वेन आई से डिस्कस नॉर्मली आपने देखा होगा आपके क्वेश्चन पेपर में भी दिस वर्ड इज यूजली यूज डिस्कस नो दिस इज वेरी वेग दिस वर्ड डिस्कस विद हूम डिस्कशन तो आमने सामने होती है कागज के ऊपर डिस्कशन कभी देखा है सो वी नीड टू यूज एक्शन वर्क एक्शन वर्क का मतलब दे स्पेसिफाई द एक्शन दे गिव द डायरेक्शन दे आर ऑब्जर्वेबल बिहेवियर या तो डिफाइन बोलकर बोलेगा या लिख के बताएगा आई कैन मेजर इट बट इफ आई आज आप फोर्स के बारे में क्या जानते हैं वट यू नोट फोर्स अथा सागर ओके सो हर एक स्टूडेंट जो है इसका स्कोप अपनी माइंड के अनुसार एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में पूछे बताएगा एवरीबॉडी नोज एवरीथिंग 
लेकिन जब एग्जामिनेशन में लिखने की बात आती है उस समय हर एक बच्चा अपना स्कोप अपने आप निश्चित करता है और जो दूसरा टीचर है वो उसको भी मालूम नहीं मैंने क्या चीज देखनी है अगर एक बच्चे ने सब कुछ लिखा वहीं से उसको उसका टेम्पो सेट हो जाता है सो यू हैव टू यूज दीज एक्शन वर्ब वो आगे हम एक्सप्लेन करेंगे सो यूनिट्स आर देयर चैप्टर्स आर इंक्लूडेड इन दूनिट्स एंड टॉपिक्स आर इंक्लूडेड इन दैप्टर्स सब टॉपिक्स आर देयर इन द topics and then the uh, the minimum uh, you can say the smallest portion is the data or the information so data information is included in sub topics sub topics are included in topics topics are included in chapters chapters are contained in the units so it means sequence of instruction is first determined for the for the target objectives and then for the enabling objectives theek hai na aap subject mein dekhenge units are सीक्वेंस और हर एक यूनिट में फिर टॉपिक जो है या कंटेंट है वो उस तरह सीक्वेंस तो इसी तरह क्लासरूम में भी यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर ए सीक्वेंस यू हैव टू गिव सीक्वेंस टू द कंटेंट मैटर व्हिच यू आर गोइंग टू डिलीवर ओके सो डिटरमिनिंग सब्जेक्ट स्ट्रक्चर एंड सीक्वेंस देन नेक्स्ट इज एनालिसिस ऑफ सब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव थ्री काइंड ऑफ एनालिसिस विल बी कैरीड आउट इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोसेसिंग एनालिसिस दैट इज वॉट आर देंटल ऑपरेशन we have to build in the students mental operations kya hote hain explain describe enumerate ye sare mental operations hain to mujhe pehle ye batana hai ki kaun se mental operations maine is topic dwara unme build karne hain okay and then the task classification task classification shuru mein maine bola tha the broad objective of technical education system is to develop all round personality developing all round personality in students means developing their capabilities in intellect and non intellect areas intellect areas are concerned with knowledge and some part of skill and non intellect areas are concerned with some part of skill and the attitude that is his behavior okay so accordingly there are three uh, 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 domains of uh, uh, instruction objectives cognitive domain which is concerned with knowledge psycho motor domain is concerned with skill and affective domain is concerned with attitude feelings interest values appreciation etc okay so humne ye dekhna hai ki is topic dwara hum unme cognition kaun si develop kar rahe hain kaun se skills develop kar rahe hain aur kis tarah ka behavior jo hai wo usme develop kiya ja raha hai to uski hum analysis karenge and third one is learning task analysis that is uh, giving a hierarchy ab main aapke samne iske example leta hu first of all task analysis what is task analysis task analysis is a process of breaking down the complexity of an activity into easier steps those steps are then arranged in a sequence and students are taught those steps one by one in the sequence so it is a process of breaking down or analyzing a task into smaller and more detailed constituent units and of then sequencing these units of analysis in an order of priority based upon their importance in the learning ye dr s k bhattacharya ne aapke sath kal discuss kiya tha task analysis and instruction objectives okay so isme it involves two thing one is breaking down that is analyzing then giving some kind of relationship that is synthesis for example if i ask you can you uh, say analyze this lcd projector what do i mean i mean you tell me what are its parts what are their functions okay analysis means this thing and when you are analyzing it that is when you are dismantling it what more you are looking into it kya dekh dekhte ho usme क्या देखते हो 
construction how they are related wonderful you are looking into various relationships how one component is related to another component because if you do not understand the relationship you will not be able to assemble it again or you will not be able to construct something new because you know about the components their functions but you have not understood the relationship then you will not be able to produce something new क्योंकि वो तो चीजें जो मेन जो कंपोनेंट्स हैं और फंक्शंस वो तो वही रहेंगे उनको किस तरह से लिंक करके यू हैव टू प्रोड्यूस और यू हैव टू क्रिएट समथिंग न्यू दैट इज नीडेड सो सिंथेसिस सिंथेसिस रिक्वायर्स लुकिंग इनटू द रिलेशनशिप ये डॉक्टर भट्टाचार्य ने आपके साथ डिस्कस किया होगा से टॉपिक कुड बी एनी सेटिंग अप ए लेथ जॉब इट इज ए जॉब और आई वेन आई से Loading a film into a camera, it's a job. Topic: Ohm's law. Solving simultaneous equation. So this is a topic from theory. And skill: Skill is the further extension of job. It is a small act which has no structure. Okay, जैसे मैंने इसको यहाँ से उठा के यहाँ रखा. It's a small act, but it has no structure. It's a simple act. Job involves number of acts. जैसे सेटिंग अप ए लेथ है इट इंक्लूड्स सो मेनी स्मॉल स्मॉल एक्ट्स तभी उनको बन, बनाने के बाद वो जॉब जो है वो परफॉर्म होती है सो टॉपिक इज ब्रोकन डाउन इनटू से इस टॉपिक को पढ़ाने के लिए यू हैव टू टीच फर्स्ट दिस देन दिस देन दिस देन दिस एंड देन दिस ओके देन अगेन इट इज ब्रोकन डाउन इंटू सेकेंड लेवल फॉर टीचिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग द टीचर हैज टू फर्स्ट एक्सप्लेन दिस एंड देन दिस for teaching this he has to explain this this this, this and so on likewise you will go on breaking down into its smaller constituent element till it becomes self explanatory that is nothing is required to teach that thing for example yahan par dekhiye maine isko padhane ke liye ye teen cheez padhani hai okay aur isko padhane ke liye further kuch nahi chahiye mujhe so and you will find that at the top the content was less detailed and at the bottom the content is too much detailed and if you have this one page task analysis with you you need not carry large notes in the classroom you can develop your lecture with the help of this task analysis itself okay uh, let me give you one example job of an engine mechanic this is the uh, topic from skill or you can say workshop sub topics are or you can say duties are tuning the carburetor adjusting tappets adjusting spark plug gap changing engine oil cleaning the spark plug so you see all these uh, duties are written down in a sequence first of all he has to uh, that is the uh, he, uh, this duty is uh, tuning the carburetor adjusting tappets these are the duties okay then let us uh, have a look at how to change engine oil so what are the task required to change engine oil jacking up the car placing oil container under the sump removing some plug allowing oil to drain away now these can be further broken down into small small acts for example for jacking up the car what are the activities you uh, you do pehle kya karenge जैकिंग ऑफ द कार है पहले क्या करेंगे यू विल सेलेक्ट द राइट काइंड ऑफ जैक फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर व्हीकल देन प्लेसिंग द जैक किसी भी जगह नहीं रख सकते ठीक है देन मैन्युपुलेटिंग द जैक कितने हाइट तक लेके जाना है ताकि वो आदमी जो है नीचे जाएगा उसको सम खोलेगा तो यू सी अक्वायरिंग राइट काइंड ऑफ जैक पोजीशनिंग दी जैक एंड मैन्युपुलेटिंग दी जैक अब इनको आगे करने के लिए कुछ नहीं चाहिए पढ़ाने के लिए दिस इज हाउ एंड यू सी देर आर सेवरल लेवल्स ऑफ एनालिसिस एंड ईच लेवल प्रोड्यूस ग्रेटर डिटेल देन दी वन बिफोर इट एंड ईच लेवल प्रोड्यूस मोर एज आई सेट इंक्रीजिंग डिटेल and follows logically and progressively than the one before it okay now coming to 
इंस्ट्रक्शनल डिजाइन प्रोसेस नाउ वी आर शिफ्टिंग टू लेसन लेवल पहले हमने तीन एक्टिविटी की थी प्रोग्राम लेवल की और उसके बाद वी हैव अंडरस्टूड टू एक्टिविटीज एट दी सब्जेक्ट लेवल नाउ वी आर शिफ्टिंग टू लेसन लेवल फर्स्ट इज डिफाइनिंग परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्जेक्टिव वट इज परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्जेक्टिव परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्जेक्टिव इज ए सेंटेंस और ए स्टेटमेंट which describes what the student will be able to do at the end of a unit of instruction this is the definition of performance objective what the student will be able to do perform karega performance objective hai pehle hote the teacher objective wo kya tha to enable them understand mera uddeshy hai ki inko maine ohms law ki jankari deni hai jankari dene ke baad wo kya karega kuch nahi pata ab objective kya hai After the topic is over, they will be able to state Ohm's law. They will be able to draw a circle diagram of Ohm's law. They will be able to verify Ohm's law. They will be able to draw graph. They will be able to do. So performance objective kya hai? These are the sentences or statement which describe what the student will be able to do at the end of a unit of instruction. And uh, लर्निंग आउटकम इनको लर्निंग आउटकम भी बोलते हैं उनमें लर्निंग आउटकम कौन से जो है डेवेल्प होंगे एंड परफॉर्मेंस क्या होती है इट इट हैज टू बी ऑब्जर्वेबल इट हैज टू बी मेजरेबल वॉट डू यू मीन इट इज नॉट ऑब्जर्वेबल बिकॉज एवरी बॉडी विल गिट डिफरेंट मीनिंग मैंने पूछता हूं डिफाइंड फोर्स state as a unit of force this is observable and this is measurable defined force as per my instruction if he has given the definition i'll give full marks if i say state as a unit of force if he has given answer newton i'll give full marks because state agar main bolta hu state unit of force so he will give answer in cgs system or say uh, fps system but i uh, uh, i want him to answer newton but this is right. si system so you need to specify you need to specify state si unit of force three domains jaise maine pehle bola tha unke bare mein uh, thoda sa discuss karenge cognitive domain refers to intellectual outcomes knowledge understanding problem solving and uh, it has got various level beginning with remembering moving up to creating affective domain is concerned with our attitude our feelings our interest our uh, emotions and it has got five levels beginning with receiving moving up to characterization and uh, psychomotor domain refers to hand and head coordination and it has got five levels uh, imitation manipulation precision articulation and uh, naturalization lekin is session mein uh we will focus on the cognitive domain because we are concerned with theory topic so cognitive domain at the lowest level is remembering remembering refers to recall of information that is uh, he is able to recall restate or remember learn information this is the lowest level this is concerned with the basic terminology factual information name one sulfide ore of copper he need not understand it he has simply remember it and he is simply reproducing it state as a unit of force no understanding is required water boils at 100 degree centigrade no understanding is required this is lcd projector this is mouse okay this is pen drive no understanding is required lowest level and usually hum exam mein yahi question puchte hain write a short note on semiconductor semiconductor mein pura chapter hai puri book hai kitna likhna hai kya likhna hai so he is simply reproducing so never ask these kinds of question in the question paper so these are the verbs which can be used for preparing items at this level choose cite enumerate label list list the components of computer system 
लोकेट मैच नेम मैंने बोला नेम वन सल्फाइड और कॉपर नेम दी डिवाइस विच इज यूज टू मेजर करंट ओके आउटलाइन कोट रीड रिकॉर्ड रिकॉर्ड रिप्रोड्यूस रिव्यू ये कुछ एक्शन वर्ब्स हैं जो स्टूडेंट के बिहेवियर को लोएस्ट लेवल में मेजर करने के लिए यूज में लाए जाते हैं नाउ आफ्टर रिमेम्बरिंग इज नेक्स्ट इन दर के इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग अंडरस्टैंडिंग मीन्स एक्सप्लेनिंग आइडियाज और कॉन्सेप्ट ही विल बी एबल टू ग्रेस द मीनिंग ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन बाई इंटरप्रेटिंग एंड ट्रांसलेटिंग ट्रांसलेशन दैट इफ आई आर इफ द नॉर्मल टेम्परेचर ऑफ ह्यूमन बॉडी इज नाइंटी एट पॉइंट सिक्स डिग्री फॉर नाइट कन्वर्ट इट इन टू डिग्री सेल्सियस इफ द स्टूडेंट हैज अंडरस्टूड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन डिग्री फॉर नाइट एंड डिग्री सेल्सियस ही विल बी एबल टू कन्वर्ट फ्रॉम वन फॉर्म टू एन अदर ओके और आई हैव गिवन हिम डेटा अबाउट पास्ट फाइव ईयर्स ऑन लुकिंग एट द डेटा ही विल बी एबल टू गिव प्रोजेक्शन फॉर द नेक्स्ट ईयर तो एक्सट्रापोलेशन ओके सो इंटरप्रेट इंटरप्रेट कर रहा है सो दीज आर दर्ब्स विच आर यूज टू राइट परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्जेक्टिव एट दिस लेवल क्लासीफाई कन्वर्ट डिफाइन डिस्क्राइब एस्टिमेट एक्सप्लेन एक्सप्रेस आइडेंटिफाई इंडिकेट एंड सो ऑन डिस्क्राइब each of three newton's laws of motion with one example each now next level is his ability to use classroom information in another familiar situation isme application wo nahi hoga ki simply putting the values in the formula and finding out the uh, factor jaise maine bola f is equal to ma f and m are given the student has to find a this is not application application means how this relationship between f and a can be used for solving another problem that is applying that is his ability to apply classroom learning in a new situation so these are the verbs which can be used for writing objective at this level adapt apply ye aapko humne learning material diya hua hai and uh, uh, everything is included here compute construct demonstrate draw exhibit show generalize interpret these are the behavioral terms then next in the hierarchy is analysis analysis means breaking something into its parts okay so critical thinking it involves uh, breaking information into parts to explore understanding and various interrelationships maine example aapko diya lcd projector ka and these are the action verbs which can be used for writing performance items at this level analyze appraise arrange compare contrast criticize detect and so on then next is evaluation evaluating critical thinking but he is able to justify a decision or a course of action when i say which method is useful in this situation and why when i say how far is it true that ic engine is a health hazard justify your answer with examples so this is uh, at this level evaluation appraise assess choose compare conclude decide differentiate justify and so on and last in the hierarchy is the higher stage is creating again involves critical thinking but at this stage he is able to generate new ideas products or ways of viewing things that is a uh, creating involves use of the lower level objectives he needs to have the basic knowledge understanding application analysis synthesis if he can do all these things he can produce something new when i say design a software for this 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 so it means he is making use of the lowest level knowledge sab ko use karke he is um, uh, constructing something new so these are the various levels ye isko hum chhodenge now next is lesson level pe agla step hai preparing lesson plan lesson plan is a teaching outline of important points of a lesson arranged in the order in which they are to be presented it may include 
objectives to be achieved or you can say points to be made amount of content matter to be covered kind of uh, instruction method or instruction media to be used questions to be asked reference to assignment textbook etc so lesson planning keeps the teacher on the track it gives confidence to the teacher because he knows in advance what to do and what not to do when you are preparing a lesson plan you can also anticipate the likely questions that a student may ask from you if you have no lesson plan then uh, you may face some difficulties in the classroom so lesson planning is very essential so it's a blueprint of time frame teacher and learner activities we include both teacher activity and learner activity including material media for achieving the stated objective and lesson plan covers events of instruction in the introductory developmental and recapitulation stages and we will study these events of instruction in our next uh, le uh, lecture now i'm not taking up at this stage now next is that uh, lesson level for developing selecting materials and media media refers to both print and non print print media may include instructional sheet it may include charts pictures diagrams okay and non print media may include video program computer assisted instruction package or you can say audio cassettes and so on all these come under non print media and uh, teacher has to select <coughs> the material out of the material available in the college or he has to develop the media and while selecting and while developing media teacher has to consider few factors like nature of the subject learners needs learner jo hai kaun se media ko zyada pasand karte hain okay then mode of presentation size of the class say class size jo hai 100 ka hai then chart will not be helpful because uh, uh, chart cannot be shown in a class of say 100 students in that case you need powerpoint presentation or some projection is required okay so that uh, even the students sitting at the back bench may be able to see it very uh, uh, you guys easily so practical factors ho sakte hain aur teachers own capability teacher ne bola ki main ppt use karunga first time he has prepared ppt but he doesn't know how to um, proceed or how to move this may be the problem also so these are some of the factors which need to be considered while developing and while selecting media then assessing student performance by assessment we mean those activities which are designed to measure student achievement brought about as a result of unit of instruction and performance objective plays a very important role in writing performance items because performance expected in the objective must be the same when it when we are going to evaluate that will provide you valid and reliable results abhi maine validity aur reliability ki baat ki hai what do you mean by reliability what is reliability after some time you are going to be able to find okay anybody else last for long time last for long time doing it repeatedly flexibility or conveniently desirable to just keep accepting the closeness to the word is all the relevant mm long last consistency reliability means consistency of results from one measurement to another measurement iska meaning kya hai consistency of results from one measurement to another that is if one answer sheet is marked by two teacher that answer sheet must carry almost same marks there can be a difference of one or two marks but that that difference is not significant okay and if i uh, give you one question today and the same question is given to you next day 
देर शुड नॉट बी मच वेरिएशन इन योर ओन आंसर लेकिन जैसे मैंने क्वेश्चन बोला राइट ए शॉर्ट नोट ऑन सेमी कंडक्टर दिस आंसर शीट विल बी मार्क डिफरेंटली बाई डिफरेंट टीचर लाइक वाइज द स्टूडेंट विल गिव डिफरेंट आंसर ऑन द नेक्स्ट ओकेजन ही विल नॉट बी एबल टू गिव द सेम आंसर सो इसका मतलब क्या हुआ एक तो लेंथ ऑफ द आइटम जो है लेंथ ऑफ द टेस्ट दैट अफेक्ट द रिलायबिलिटी इफ वी गिव और इफ वी आस्क हिम टू अटेम्प्ट एनी फाइव आउट ऑफ एट क्वेश्चन इट मीन्स फर्स्टली he is uh, say uh, attempting once one student is attempting one set of five question another student is attempting another set of five question third student is attempting another combination of five questions can you compare the learning abilities of all these students you cannot compare okay and all are essay questions so uh, chance factor will play its important role because student kehte hain ye main panch chapter kar leta hu is teen ko chhod deta hu because he has seen last year's question paper and he knows is saal ye question aaya agle saal nahi aayega because uh, he has seen the trend hum bhi to guess banate the all of us um, have, uh, have been preparing the guess question paper to usme kya hai agar question paper mein if there are more number of items <coughs> एज कम्पेयर टू फ्यू आइटम चाहे ठीक है आपके पांच क्वेश्चन अटेम्प्ट करने हैं बट एवरी क्वेश्चन इज ऑफ फाइव ट्वेंटी मार्क्स यू कैन हैव फोर पार्ट और फाइव पार्ट और थ्री पार्ट ए बी सी डी ओके सो दैट मोर कवरेज इज गिवन एंड दी क्वेश्चन आर ऑफ से रिस्ट्रिक्टेड रिस्पॉन्स देन यू विल बी एबल टू गिव द ऑब्जेक्टिव स्कोरिंग सो रिलायबिलिटी वट इज वैलिडिटी What is validity? Validity refers to information values. Okay. मैं एक हिंट देता हूं A test is valid if it measures what it is supposed to measure. Measuring the end product. Keeping objective in mind. अगर मेरा objective है that after the topic is over he will be able to define force then the corresponding question should be define force but if you ask what is force now what do you know about force what is force and what do you know about force are measuring something different our objective was that hey, they should be able to define force so there must be one to one correspondence between the statement of the question and the instruction objective यानी आपका जो आइटम है वो वही चीज मैयर कर रहा है जो ऑब्जेक्टिव में है देन दैट विल प्रोवाइड यू वैलिड रिजल्ट अदरवाइज द आइटम इज नॉट वैलिड और वैलिडिटी कैसे इंक्रीज की जा सकती है हाउ कैन यू इंक्रीज द वैलिडिटी बताइए बाय गिविंग स्पेसिफिक डायरेक्शन बाय गिविंग सफिशियंट इंफॉर्मेशन अगर मैंने बोला एक्सप्लेन With a neat sketch, the working principle of carburetor of an IC engine. So, सभी बच्चे neat sketch भी बनाएंगे. अगर मैंने बोला explain working principle only, ठीक है? तो कुछ बच्चे जो हैं कुछ तरीके से लिखेंगे, कुछ बच्चे कुछ और teacher अपने आप ही marks काट लेगा. अगर किसी ने diagram नहीं भी बनाई, teacher अपने आप marks काट लेगा. इसने diagram तो बनाई नहीं है. Teacher कहता है ये तो implied है. मैंने नहीं पूछ लिखा तो क्या हो गया? But you have to give. आपने बोला एक्सप्लेन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ लुब्रिकेंट या एक्सप्लेन एडवांटेजेस ऑफ लुब्रिक लुब्रिकेंट्स एक स्टूडेंट ने चार दे दी एक ने छह दे दी एक ने आठ दे दी फिर प्रॉब्लम आ गई आता सबको है तो कॉन्ट यू इंडिकेट दिस स्कोप एक्सप्लेन एनी फोर प्रॉपर्टीज और एनी फोर एप्लीकेशन क्योंकि तो चार ही मार्क्स हैं तो वैलिडिटी तभी इंक्रीज होगी अगर आप स्पेसिफिक डायरेक्शन या सफिशिएंट उसको इंफॉर्मेशन देते हो और लाइकवाइज अगर आपने जैसे ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप आइटम्स हैं यू हैव अरेंज लाइक पहले का ए आंसर दूसरे का बी तीसरे का सी चौथे का डी पांचवे का फिर ए सो ही विल फॉलो ए पर्टिकुलर ट्रेंड तो इस तरह से आप उसको अरेंज नहीं करेंगे 
and then you will uh, state the items in the order of difficulty agar pehla hi question is very difficult very tough to kya hoga jo student hai uska jo morale hai wo kam ho jayega so you begin with simple question then slowly and slowly you increase the difficulty level so this is how you can uh, increase the validity of your question paper and two types of evaluation is carried out one is called as formative evaluation and second is summative evaluation what is formative evaluation formative evaluation is carried out during the formation of learning wo kya hoti hai pehle to aap before you uh, come to the actual topic you test the prerequisites for any any uh, for learning any topic certain prerequisites are required these prerequisites are nothing but the capabilities the students already acquired prior to instruction which indicate their readiness to learn abhi maine topic diya tha ohms law sorry diya tha topic inertia to maine assume kiya kiya tha that my students are already familiar with concept of rest concept of motion concept of force to ya to main uska overview do or i can ask few questions to test their presence of p requisites yes. so formative mein ek starting mein question aa gaye then maine left hand side mein overview diya tha inertia of rest inertia of motion inertia of direction pehle inertia of rest mein explain karunga i will ask one or two question then i will come to inertia of motion explain it with example then again i will ask one or two question that is okay. evaluation Hello? during formation of learning we will ask few questions हेलो हाँ जी सर सर आई एम यस सर ओके सर 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 मिनट अच्छा अभी लेक्चर चल रहा है आप लेक्चर के बाद लंच पर चले जाइए sir we have already declared for lunch actually uh, dr raj has said you can go uh, you can go for the lunch it is declared it's okay you can go in the time again 2:00 so so sir please tell tell tell, tell us by what time you should join me 2 2 2 pm okay sir okay thank you thank you sir so then it, it is summative evaluation as far as the uh, classroom lecture is concerned summative evaluation means before leaving the classroom the teacher asks few questions pertaining to the entire chapter and when it comes to the uh, uh, comes at the level of uh, program or subject it is the end semester examination okay so summative evaluation can be in the classroom uh, at the end of a lecture and it can be uh, in the form of uh, end semester examination uh, which is uh, conducted by university then next is a uh, purpose of evaluation uh, we will take in uh, another class ha yes next is again few activities are required at the program level theek hai maine aapko shuru mein teen activity batayi program level ki then two activities at the subject level then three activities at the lesson level now at the program level teacher preparation is absolutely necessary there is a need to update and upgrade teachers in the subject in education technology in education project planning and management maybe in r&d research and development maybe uh, in the management uh, uh, areas okay and uh, uh, this activity must be linked with career growth only then uh, the uh, 
uh, willingness of a teacher uh, will be there and uh, teachers need to be deployed after they have undergone some training program maybe say one of you have uh, uh, attended say education project planning and management short term course now you may be given some task for uh, preparing a project okay so how project can be divided into its uh, various activities that is milestones um, events uh, then uh, you have to find out per cpm ye sara aap bana ke bana sakte because you have undergone the training you have uh, undergone a training uh, in research methodology you may be given some small uh, research study for uh, carrying out in the college okay so teachers need to be so tabhi unka jo morale hai boost hoga okay so teacher preparation is absolutely necessary formative evaluation at the program level wo kya hogi usme formative evaluation mein maine bola evaluation during the formation of learning you have two three uh, you can say sessional test some assignments are given to the students sometimes students are given to uh, make seminar of uh, present seminar and so on so formative evaluation ho sakta hai so formative evaluation will give you some feedback aur agar aap koi naya naya system introduce karne ja rahe hain to usko aap chote uh, ek college mein aap usko uh, implement karenge as a field testing and then you will get feedback from the students the teachers and the other agencies you may modify your system and then at the end you can perform the summative evaluation that is end semester and after you have seen number of evaluation and you have found that it is giving a reliable result then it means system is ready to uh, uh, install in all the institution or to diffuse diffuse means to install various institution okay so system is ready and it is uh, uh, any uh, error free uh, program so it means system approach to instruction design uh, is a is a systematic approach to instruction design and uh, it involves various stages beginning with need analysis up to diffusion and uh, you cannot control uh, any component in isolation because uh, uh, the factor which is controlled in isolation with other factors it may uh, you can say uh, it may affect the overall functioning of the system either adversely adversely or beneficially so we have to employ system approach while designing of instruction at the uh, lesson level or at the subject level or at the program level so if you have any queries or you have any question you are welcome yes yes you have any questions on this particular thing so you have any queries at uh, 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 allahabad how do you do the uh, formative evaluation and uh, summative evaluation like what oh. percentage we have to do uh you see i think uh, it should be 50 50 <coughs> that is 50% weightage must be given for formative evaluation but this formative evaluation must have uh, some specified criteria that is uh, students may be Uh, asked to appear in say two sessional or three sessional if uh, three sessional it means uh, best two awards can be taken say 50 marks uh, is sessional you give 30% weightage for the written sessional test and 20% weightage for assignment or for this uh, it, it is a, it should be a continuous kind of uh, formative evaluation and again 50% uh, weightage can be given uh, to the end semester examination most of the universities are following the same curriculum so for example if you, if you see the computer science and engineering they are going to have the 40 subjects 25 subjects and most of the universities are having the same curriculum and same subject in the uh, relevant areas so is it is it possible to prepare the program level subject level and lesson level 
uh, objectives for all the entire universities as a single curriculum? You see, if uh, one university is following a single curriculum, but you say that other universities are also following the same curriculum. Yehi aap kare, na? Now, so why, see, why can't, why can't uh, we prepare a single lesson plan for the entire all universities where the people can use the same thing? You see, a single lesson plan you have prepared according to your own capability. You cannot force me to explain in the same manner. I have some got, I have got some new, uh, you can say, approach. I have got some new examples. So, uh, it, this kind of freedom can be given to the teacher. Yes, freedom will be there, but that should be a model where the teacher can use that model to implement his own variety of okay. teaching. It means some effort is to be carried out at the university level to prepare lesson plans for all the subjects and they can then uh, uh, shift the lesson plans. The C programming for all the all the set branches is same. So why can't we prepare a model at the top level? Why can't they prepare the professors or something well well you see, senior professors they say that uh, I, I have been teaching this topic for the last so many years. I did not prepare this. So they do not prepare. Yes, that that, that is what we use to the young lecturers where they feel that. I think lesson planning is required. required. I think lesson plan is required for every teacher, not only for the junior teacher. You see, I need to know who are my things, what are their capabilities. I may change some um, approach, different one, kind of audience, uh, and I must know the number of audience. How many people are there? Whether PPT is available or not. So, accordingly, you will uh, go for different kinds of lecture plans. You will take uh, the same lecture plan. And they uh, teach same topic with the same lecture. You need to change. You can prepare your lecture notes, but always prepare your lecture plan uh, uh, every time. Anji. Any other question? So, okay, we'll take for lunch. And uh, we'll uh, again assemble at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much. You can see quarter to two of each and the villa because the problems are there. This is the hockey and the boss are in our rules. We need to know to be the half of the book. We need to know to be the half of the book. We need to know to be the half of the book.